Once upon a time, there was a little thing that crept tiptoe. It wasn't a boy and it wasn't a girl, for it wasn't human at all. I don't quite know what it was, but I can tell you how it came to walk tiptoe. You see, it loved humans, just ordinary boys and girls, and it had a whole picture book full of them. And it was always saying to its mother, Mother, why can't I be a human? If I always keep my ears covered, couldn't I be a human then, Mother? For its ears and the ears of its mother and all their friends and relations were high and pointed and stood up on each side of their heads. But its mother said, No, little thing, for humans always walk with their feet touching the ground, so they would know at once that you weren't human and they wouldn't play with you. The little thing and its mother and their friends and relations couldn't touch their feet to the ground, but walked on air. And the nearest they could get to the earth was just about three inches above it. Little thing sat with its picture book and looked at the pictures of little boys and girls standing on the ground. And it felt so envious as it looked down at the earth, three inches below its feet. Presently, it stretched its toes down as far as ever they would go. But though it got nearer to the ground, it couldn't touch it. Then, little thing put its picture book down and set its little white teeth. And it jumped up and practiced and practiced standing on its toes. Until at last, what do you think? It just managed to touch the earth with the very tip its tiptoes. Mother, it squealed. Look at me, walking on the earth like a human. And it actually walked a few steps, tiptoe, like a ballet dancer. And its mother was just as surprised as could be. But little thing couldn't keep it up for very long because its toes got so tired with stretching. But as it sat down to rest, it set its little white teeth again and said, I'll practice and I'll practice and I'll practice until I can walk on the earth for as long as I like without getting tired. And so it did. And after a while, it could walk on its tiptoes as much as it wished without getting tired. And its mother and friends and relations were just as proud as they were. Well, said Little Thing, looking at the picture book, now I must have a human hat to cover my ears. So its mother and friends and relations made it a little white hat with a wreath of buttercups round it. And Little Thing said, Thank you, mother, friends and relations and put the little hat on its head. Next, said Little Thing, looking at the picture book, I must have a human dress. Shall it be a boy dress or a girl dress? But its mother and friends and relations thought a boy dress would be difficult to manage without a proper pattern. So they made a little white girl dress and trimmed it with daisies. And Little Thing said, Thank you, mother, friends and relations, and put the little dress on. Lastly, said Little Thing, looking at the picture book, I must have a pair of human boots. But its mother and friends and relations didn't know how to make those, nor what to make them of. So they got some paints and a brush, and they painted a pair of little boots on Little Thing's bare feet. And Little Thing said, Thank you, mother, friends and relations, and look down at its boots with much satisfaction. Now, said Little Thing, shutting up the picture book, I must set out into the world to find some humans to play with. So it said goodbye to its mother and friends and relations and set out into the world, walking carefully and proudly on its tiptoes and keeping its hat firmly pulled down over its ears. Presently, 
they came to a village green where a small crowd of boys and girls were playing. Touched you at last. It sounded like a very rough and noisy game by the way they were playing it. But Little Thing joined in with gusto. Its little toes well down to the ground and its little hat well over its ears. But the children could never manage to touch Little Thing, nor any other time, as it was too quick for them. And, and presently they began to get quite annoyed and then they began to notice that Little Thing never put its heels down as they did. And then, because they didn't understand, they began to jeer and throw stones, which was a silly thing to do, because people who throw stones, except for dogs to run after, generally are silly. So Little Thing ran away from them on its little tiptoes, feeling puzzled and hurt. Presently, it came to some green fields where a little girl was wandering with a little basket and a doll, humming to herself as she went. So Little Thing drew near and joined in humming with its little toes well down to the ground and its little hat well over its ears. And the little girl turned and smiled at Little Thing and gave it her doll to carry. And all that day, they played together. The little girl and her doll and Little Thing sharing the food from her basket and making little fairy houses and mossy tree roots and spreading little fairy feasts with berries and acorn cups. And Little Thing felt exactly like a human being. Presently, as the sun began to go down, the little girl said, I like you. You're nice to play with. The other children are rough. I don't like playing with them. And Little Thing said, I don't play with them because they won't let me. Why do you like playing with me? And the little girl said, You have such a pretty buttercup hat and such a pretty daisy dress. And I don't like other children. But you said you liked me, said Little Thing, trembling a little. Oh, well, but, said the little girl kindly, you aren't a real child, are you? You're only just a pretend. How did you know? Said Little Thing in a little voice. Why, said the little girl, you don't stand properly on the ground and your ears are sticking up right through your hat, which was perfectly true. Oh, don't be sad, little thing, said the little girl, for I like you best as you are. But little thing felt that disappointment was more than it could bear. And as the sun sank down behind the trees, it stopped standing on tiptoe. And on the wind above the ground, it ran and ran back to its mother and friends and relations. And the little girl with her doll and basket went home to bed.